that's the secret. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm making this video because there you go. <laughs> beauties welcome back to my channel I'm so happy that you joined me today I am talking all about confidence I feel like this is a topic that a lot of us struggle with or have struggled with in the past I know that for me I have had a lot of issues with low self-esteem and lack of confidence and this has held me back from so much this is something that I feel like I'm constantly working on and it's definitely one of those things where practice makes perfect you just have to keep working on it and have to keep practicing and then eventually it becomes second nature. So I've been blogging and Instagramming for over five years and I always find it interesting when people comment about my confidence. They just say like, wow, I wish I had as much confidence as you or wow, you look so confident. And inside I'm just like, what do you mean? Because I'm totally not confident at all. I feel like sometimes pictures can convey certain things that aren't a reality. I've opened up about my confidence struggles just a little bit on the vlog. I haven't really talked about it too much, but it has definitely been a journey and there have been a lot of things that I have done for myself in order to raise my self-esteem and to raise my self-confidence and I wanted to share those with you. So a little bit of backstory about my confidence. A lot of this stemmed from childhood and I feel like that's a common factor sometimes. And what I also find really interesting is that a lot of times lack of confidence and low self-esteem is usually caused by other people and so that can come from people making fun of you or saying mean things about you or calling you names words hurt they do and a lot of times we take that stuff personally when it's not truth and it's not real. When I was younger, I was called a variety of names. I was a chubby kid and people would say that I was big boned or they would comment on my size and they would also comment on my height. I am under five foot, I'm 4'11", and I wasn't always confident with my height because people commented on it constantly about how I was so short and this and that and and then also my looks, especially my nose. People would say that my nose was too big for my face and that I would be pretty if I had a nose job. And keep in mind, this was when I was like in junior high. And so those things are not very nice to say to people and they leave a lasting impression. And then also when I started teaching guitar, that was a really big hit to my self-esteem. I didn't feel like I was good enough. And that has been a pattern in my life of not feeling good enough in anything I've done. And so I have overcompensated for that with straight A's or this or that because I wanted to feel like I was good enough and it almost felt like nothing I did was good enough. And so when I started teaching guitar, I felt that I wasn't a good enough guitarist to be teaching other people because I, I hadn't had lessons by myself, I was self-taught. And even though I was very knowledgeable about things, I just felt like there were other people that were better than me. And what happened is that I did it and over the years, I got more and more confident in my abilities and in my knowledge about teaching and about the instrument. And so now, personally, when anyone has a question about guitar or anything like that, they always come to me because they know that I'm gonna know the answer. If someone's looking to buy something, I know the best thing for them. Or if someone wants to learn something, I can teach them. And now, most importantly, I know that I am a talented musician. And this wasn't always the reality of it. I just didn't think that about myself. But with practice and time, and the right mindset, I became more confident in my abilities and in myself. And then also, my lack of confidence held me back from starting YouTube. I have been wanting to start this for three years and I just didn't feel like I was good enough, but I did it. <laughs> And then with my blog, it held me back from that. If you look at my very first video about me, then you'll know that I had a secret blog and I didn't tell anyone about it because I was embarrassed. And then after that, I waited like two or three years before I started blogging officially. So it's just those type of instances where lack of confidence 
can hurt us. We feel like we're not good enough, so we don't want to start something. And we feel like maybe we're not knowledgeable about something, so we just don't even try. And so that brings me to a really important point. For me, confidence is feeling comfortable. So whether that is your body, your face, your makeup, your clothes, your abilities, your talents, anything. The more comfortable you are with something, the more confident you are. And so that's the secret. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm making this video because there you go. <laughs> So yeah, that's all it is. It's just being comfortable with yourself. And I mean, that's the main point, but I also have a few other tips to share. First tip, dress the part. Our outward appearance tends to mimic how we feel inside. And I know personally that when I feel that I look good on the outside, then I feel good on the inside. I feel beautiful and more confident in myself and like I can just take over the world. And it's really an interesting thing because people don't want to put a lot of emphasis on outward appearance and I definitely agree that the inside is what counts. But the thing is, is that people see the outside. They don't always see the inside, especially when you're first meeting people. If you're having a bad day or you're feeling insecure with yourself, then that's definitely gonna show through your appearance. And even though you may not realize it, everything that we wear and the way that we present ourselves gives off a silent message to other people regarding the way that we see ourselves. The most simple way to boost your mood and your confidence is just to get ready for the day and wear something that makes you feel amazing and beautiful and powerful and confident in yourself. People that take pride in their appearance are usually more well-respected and taken more seriously. And I'm not saying that you need to go shopping all the time or, you know, constantly buy new clothes to make yourself feel better or anything like that, but just the act of putting on something that fits and that flatters you and that makes you happy can really change a lot about your attitude and the way you look and the way that you present yourself to other people. And on that note, I should also add that color is a huge mood booster. So I know that not everyone is comfortable wearing like crazy bright colors or anything like that, but I feel like if you need um, a quick boost of confidence, wear your favorite color. Mine is pink, and every time I wear pink, I just feel like a fairy. <laughs> And I just feel like so happy and it really like changes my whole mood. So wear your favorite color or wear a fun bright color if you're into that kind of thing and you will definitely see a shift in your mood and in your confidence. Also, wearing things that fit is huge. I know that when I wear things that don't fit correctly, I'm uncomfortable and then I am definitely not confident. I'm like hiding parts of myself and maybe I'm just kind of trying to blend into the background if I'm with other people. So I think that that's really important that your clothes fit and be the right size and that they're flattering on your shape. And also, I should mention that you have to take a compliment. When people compliment you on the way that you look, make sure you say thank you, make sure you acknowledge it, and make sure that you truly believe that compliment. I remember years back when people would compliment me and say, oh, you look so pretty, or oh, I love your outfit. I would just be like, oh, I don't look that great, or you know, whatever. I would kind of like bring myself down. Don't do that. <laughs> That's a bad move. Just say thank you and believe it to be true. Number two, start a self-care routine. So if you are a blog reader, it's no secret that I have struggled with acne since I was 13. <laughs> and I thought that once I got older, it would go away. And it doesn't. I get it all the time. And it can definitely be damaging to your confidence. And yeah, I cover it up with makeup, but I also have a really strict skincare routine. I am very, very into my skincare. And I feel like that has made such a huge difference. Because especially with acne, sometimes the skin can look bumpy or flaky or uh, discolored. And if you're just piling makeup on top of that, it doesn't always look 
that great. Since I've upped my skincare game, I can wear less makeup and it looks better. I mean, better on me at least. My skin looks healthier and it looks smoother and I cannot tell you, people are always complimenting my skin. They're always saying like, oh my gosh, your skin is so good and it's so smooth and you have such beautiful skin. But little do they know that underneath I've got some acne. <laughs> and another thing that I've noticed since being more consistent with my skincare is that I've become more confident in my skin itself, <laughs> acne and all. I used to be one of those people where I would not go out without makeup at all. I would be like full on makeup to go to the grocery store. And now I am okay with not wearing makeup. I feel much better when I do wear makeup, but it's not a deal breaker anymore. I'm not gonna hide away at home if I'm not wearing my makeup. So I think that skincare and just taking care of your skin and taking care of yourself in general just makes you feel better overall. And also um, hair. So I know a lot of these are like outward appearance, but I promise you that we're gonna go inward too. Take good care of your hair. Even if you don't have like a full head of hair it's okay just make sure you take care of it so take some vitamins maybe use a hair mask like twice a week and get regular trims so just taking care of your hair and your skin you're gonna feel a big boost of confidence already and that's just externally and then now we get into makeup for me I feel much more confident when I wear makeup than when I'm not wearing makeup and even though I'm more confident in my skin now than I used to be I definitely prefer to wear makeup just because it makes me feel more put together, more polished, and just more beautiful overall. And I feel like this is such a personal thing. So if you're feeling kind of down, just put on a little bit of makeup. It doesn't even have to be a lot. It can just be like uh, a tinted BB cream and some lip gloss and mascara and that's it. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. But I think that this is definitely something that has to work for you. So whatever makeup look you're comfortable wearing, that's what you should do. And while we're talking about self-care, we've got hair, makeup, and skincare. But I feel like we also have to take care of our body. So whatever that means for you. If you look in the mirror and you feel confident the way that you are, then that is wonderful. If you don't, then that's something to work on. And this can be working out or maybe changing your diet or losing weight, gaining weight, whatever makes you feel beautiful and makes you feel good about yourself, that's what you should do. Being comfortable in your own skin is really, really important. And I'm not here to say that you have to be a certain size because you definitely don't. Beauty comes in all sizes, in all shapes, in all skin colors. So however you feel the most like yourself and like your best self, then that is the key for confidence. Number three, posture and body language. This is one that I feel like a lot of people don't really think about. And this is more so about how you're perceived rather than how you feel. But I don't know, maybe it could help that way too. <laughs> One of the biggest signs of confidence to other people is having good posture. So standing tall, sitting straight up can instantly boost your confidence and convey the message that you are confident to other people as opposed to a slouching or kind of like shrinking back, which can have the opposite effect. Body language is also crucial. Eye contact is a really huge one. I used to have a really hard time with this one, but with practice, I got better. So maintaining eye contact with other people not only tells them that you're confident in yourself and your ideas and who you are as a person, but it also lets them know that you're interested in what they have to say. Make sure you're engaging with others. You say hello, you say please, you say thank you, and smile. I feel like smiling is so contagious. I'm a big smiler. <laughs> I am smiling and laughing all the time just because that's the kind of person I am and it really is contagious like when you smile then you cause other people to smile and then it's just like a domino effect and you never know like someone could really need that positivity also when you're talking to other people you have to remember that most times other people are nervous too they don't know what to do and if you initiate the conversation or you come over and say hello and you have a big smile on your face it puts them at ease and it makes the conversation happen a lot faster 
and flow a lot better. Remember that when you radiate light and happiness and positivity to other people, it radiates right back to you. You can not only change how other people perceive you as a person, but you can change how they view themselves, and that in itself is so powerful. Number four, practice makes perfect. We talked a little bit about this with my guitar playing, but it is so true. You really have to practice at it. I feel like confidence is a learned behavior. So the good news is that we can unlearn what we've been taught in the past and relearn how to respect ourselves and how to be more confident in ourselves. I've found that when I do something that I'm good at and I feel comfortable in, then I'm more confident. And if I'm doing something that I don't feel comfortable with or I feel like is maybe a weakness of mine, then I start to doubt myself. I think that you should continue to do the things that you excel at to remind yourself of how incredible you are. And then for the things that maybe you're not so great at, just keep practicing so that you can make that one of your strengths. Number five, remind yourself of your past successes. So this is one of my secret weapons. I have a list <laughs> and this might sound kind of funny, but I have a list of my previous successes things that I have done in the past that I'm proud of. We all have things that we've done in the past that we are proud of and things that are amazing that maybe we don't know of anyone else doing, so it's kind of a big deal. Brag on yourself for a moment. Make a list of all of the things that you've accomplished in the past and when you're feeling down about yourself, when you're having self-doubts, when you're not feeling confident in yourself, go back to that list and reread it. When I read my list, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I actually did that. We forget about those things. We forget about all the good things that we've accomplished and all the things that we've done in our life up until now. So sometimes we just need a little reminder of how far we've come. Number six, shift your mindset. So people used to tell me to fake it till I made it. <laughs> and I had no idea what that meant. I'm like, what do you mean? Because I never wanted to be a fake person. I am very much like, like this is who I am and <laughs> that's it, you know? When people said that, I didn't really understand what it meant but now I do and I implement it in my own life and I feel like it has really helped me with my self-confidence journey. So yes, you do have to work hard and put an effort for things to happen for you, but shifting your mindset can also be a really huge thing. Just having positive thoughts about something and really trying to manifest something for yourself, it can help so much and I never thought that, you know, that kind of thing would help, but it really does. To put it simply, in order to be more confident, act as a confident person would. How does a confident person act? Think about it and then do those things. Even if it feels a little strange because it will feel strange, you'll feel like, like this isn't myself. Like I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who this person is. But what happens is that over time, those behaviors become a part of you and you do become that confident person. So yes, you have to fake it at first, but then it eventually becomes a part of who you are as a person. It's kind of like when you are trying to change a habit. You have to do it every day on a consistent basis in order to establish that new habit or to change a habit. So it's the same kind of thing. Start small with maybe eye contact or smiling at people and just try it for a few weeks and then you'll see a change in yourself. What you think about yourself and what you visualize can become your reality. Number seven, stop caring about what other people think. I am so serious. <laughs> this is so detrimental to self-esteem and self-confidence. It's like a poison. It honestly is. I can honestly say that all of my self-esteem issues, every single one of them, have stemmed back to another person. What they have said about me, little comments they've made, name calling, just making me feel really low and like I'm not good enough. Caring about what other people think is really hard. It really is. And I honestly wish I would have learned this at a younger age, but I feel like it's really one of those things 
that just clicks one day and we all need to go through the process of that. I used to think that what other people said was the truth. I thought it was fact, but it's not. It's a lie. People say things sometimes, I don't even know why, just because. <laughs> And I would say it's usually because they're jealous of you or because they have their own insecurities and something that you're doing ignites that in them. It makes, it reminds them of their own insecurities and how they don't feel good in themselves. So when someone says something to you, don't take it to heart. Please don't. I know it is so hard. If you don't take hold of it, then what other people say becomes your reality. And it's no fun at all because then you start talking bad about yourself and you're always having negative thoughts and you think that you're this and you're that and you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see and that's just, it's not healthy. Instead, brush off the negative comments and turn it into a positive. So as I've mentioned earlier, I do have my blog, I do have my Instagram and I will say that that on Instagram in particular, I've gotten some really nasty comments and this is all recent and it really hurt my feelings. People are just not very nice. And I will say these comments were not from my followers because my followers are amazing. They are the sweetest people ever and I'm so lucky to have them. But these people, I don't know where they came from. I don't know how they found my account, but they just started saying mean things. There was a post where I was speaking from the heart and people were criticizing that. And so that made me feel really bad because I'm like, that's me, like as a person, it's not my external appearance. It's like my, my inside that you're criticizing. And it made me feel so low and really bad about myself. And just like, like what am I doing wrong, you know? And more recently I got a comment about my nose and my makeup. <laughs> and so my makeup, whatever, like, that's fine, constructive criticism. If you don't like my makeup, whatever. Like, I like it and that's all that matters. But my nose, like, that's really mean because I got mean comments about my nose when I was younger about how it was too wide and too big for my face and it was very hurtful. And so a stranger saying that to me brought up those old memories. It was a trigger for me and I was really upset about it. And so I wrote back, but then I ended up blocking this person and just deleting them because I just, I don't need that negativity in my life. I'm a constant work in progress on my self-confidence and my self-image and my self-esteem. And so when people say stuff like that, you just, you have to ignore it and just know that it's not true. This is the kind of stuff that drives people to feel the need to get plastic surgery. And I'm not saying that plastic surgery is like bad or anything, like that's completely fine you know, do whatever you want. But when it's caused by what someone else says, it just makes me really sad because all of those feelings of hurt and of not feeling good enough could have been avoided because what people say, they're just hurtful sometimes, especially strangers on the internet. You can't take that to heart. And that's something that I'm learning every single day. You don't need someone toxic in your life constantly telling you lies to make themselves feel better. Believe that you're good enough and believe in yourself and believe that you're beautiful and believe that you're a confident person and that none of those things that they say are true. And I promise that you'll rise above it and you'll feel better than you ever have. And lastly, number eight, learn to love yourself. And this is probably the most important thing. Yes, the outer appearance absolutely does have an effect on your confidence and how other people perceive you and how you see yourself, but feeling good on the inside, emotionally, mentally, that's what really counts. Sometimes when we don't feel confident about ourselves, it's because we feel inadequate. We pick ourselves apart and we start comparing ourselves to others. We compare our lives to strangers on Instagram and we compare what we have to what our neighbors have and what our friends have and what our friends look like. And I feel like a lot of us, probably all of us are constantly comparing in one way or another with our body, our face, our makeup, our clothes, our cars, our houses, everything. And that can really be detrimental to your mental health and to your emotional health. Just know that there is no right way to look or be. We are all unique. We all look different. We all have different bodies. We all have different faces. <laughs> I mean, I guess, unless you're a twin. 
<laughs> and we all have different goals and dreams and talents so no two paths are going to look alike learn not to compare yourself with other people but compare yourself to where you were in the past always be growing as a person whether that's transforming yourself physically or mentally or doing some inner work to become a better person or to change yourself always be growing in that aspect and be learning new things and becoming the person that you always wanted to be remember not to be hard on yourself when things don't work out or don't go your way and also remember that only you are in charge of the way you feel and you're the only one that can change it. When someone told me that, that hit me deep because I got to thinking and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're right. I was blaming how I felt on other people. To be honest, like other people, they did make me feel bad about myself, but I gave them permission to make me feel bad about myself. People are always gonna say things and they're always gonna be mean and judgmental, but it only affects you if you let it happen. So you have to learn to put up those boundaries and kind of put your guard up a little bit around certain people and just try not to take it personally. Learn to love yourself and I mean really love yourself. Love your body, love the way you look, love what you can do, love all of your talents, love every single part of yourself, flaws and all. And I say flaws because I, I really don't feel like anything is a flaw. I feel like anything can be beautiful if you see it in that way. Just know that any change you make is not going to happen overnight. It is something that you have to constantly work on and it's going to feel weird at first, but the more that you do it, the more that you get used to it, you get one life to live and that's it. So make it count. Don't care what other people think. Don't compare yourself to others. Love yourself, believe in yourself, and that's it. I truly, truly hope that this helped you and that it was a valuable video for you. If you liked it, feel free to share. I would absolutely love that. And make sure that you like this video and comment down below if you have anything to add or if you just want to say hi or even if you just, you liked this video, I would love to hear from you. And I will see you next week for a new video. Talk to you later. Bye.